Hi all, today we're going to be doing a problem from the International Math Olympiad. It's question number four from the year 1976. The question states, determine the greatest number which is the product of some integers and the sum of these integers is 1976, same as the year. Anyway, when dealing with problems like these, it's often better to just write it down. So I've written it here, a1 plus a2 plus a3 till a n must equal 1976 and a1 times a2 till a n must equal p max. We don't know what this is. This is what we have to find. Anyway, so instead of looking at 1976, let's look at a few smaller sums. So I've written a list of sums here. So from 2 to 9, we can see that there is a fairly clear pattern here. The, the maximum product always involves only 2s and 3s. What we're going to prove is that 3 is more efficient than any other integer. Now how are we going to prove this? A number is called more efficient than another number when for the same sum you can somehow use that other number to write it as a larger product. And just to demonstrate uh, what I mean, look at this. 3 times 3 is greater than 2 times 2 times 2, but 3 plus 3 is in fact equal to 2 plus 2 plus 2. And therefore we have that 3 is more efficient than 2 because for the same sum you have a larger product. You have 9 over here and you have 8 over here. So 3 is more efficient than 2. Basically, what this implies is that if among my p max I have a1, a2, and so on, and it's somewhere in there I have three twos, then I know that this cannot be p max because I can always write 2 times 2 times 2 as 3 times 3, and the sum will be the same, but the product will be larger. So let's see, how are we going to prove this? Well, in the case of the 2, we had 3 times 3 is greater than 2 times 2 times 2, and 3 plus 3 is greater than 2 plus 2 plus 2. And 3 plus 3 is equal to 2 plus 2 plus 2. So anyway, let's proceed. So I say that if 3 raised to x is greater than x raised to 3 for any integer x then 3 is more efficient than x and the reasoning behind this is that if I have 3 raised to x then this implies I'll have 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 x times and on the other side I'll have x plus x plus x and this is 3 times so both of them are going to give me the same sum of 3x, but clearly different products. And if 3 raised to x gives me a larger product, then clearly 3 is more efficient than x, right? Same sum, but larger product. Now let's actually see how we're going to prove this. So we have that 3 raised to x is greater than x raised to 3. And whenever there is a problem concerning inequalities and integers, we try to use induction. So we have the base case x equals 4, so we have 3 raised to 4 is greater than 4 raised to 3, and indeed 81 is greater than 64, so this is perfectly fine. So our induction hypothesis was that 3 raised to k must be greater than k raised to 3 for k greater than 3. And now we have to prove that 3 raised to k plus 1 is greater than k plus 1 raised to 3. And now I can simply write the left hand side as 3 raised to k times 3. And I can write the right hand side as k plus 1 cube divided by k cube times k cube. And since I know that 3 raised to k is greater than k cube, all that I have to prove is that 3 is going to be greater than k plus 1 cube divided by k cube for k greater than 3. And the way we're going to do this is by using some calculus. So we have f of k equals k plus 1 cubed times k raised to minus 3. And the derivative of this guy 
is going to be the first function times the derivative of the second function plus the second function times the derivative of the first function. And after a bit of simplification, we finally end up with minus 3 times k plus 1 squared divided by k raised to 4. And clearly, you can see that the derivative of k is always going to be less than 0, meaning f of k is a decreasing function. And this has some rather major implications. So we had that we had to prove 3 is always going to be greater than f of k for k greater than 3, right? But what we also know is that we also know that f of 4 is always going to be less than f of 3 and f of 5 is also going to be less than f of 4 and f of 3 because f of k is a decreasing function. So essentially, what we can do here, because f of k is a decreasing function, we can simply put k as 4 inside, because the maximum value of, uh, of f of k is going to be f of 4, right? And after that, if you put any other value, then uh, if you put any other value, then that value is going to be less than f of 4. And so let's just do that. So we have 3 is greater than f of 4 over here. And this is just 3 is greater than 4 plus 1 cube divided by 4 cube. And this gives us 3 is greater than 125 divided by 64. And we get 192 is greater than 125. And therefore, our induction has finished. And we have indeed proven that 3 raised to x it's always going to be greater than x raised to 3 for all x greater than 3. 3, it was clearly more efficient than 2. More efficient than 2. And we also proved that it's more efficient than any other number greater than itself. So now we have 1976 equals 3 times 658 plus 2. And we want to maximize this. We want to maximize this guy because that's just a 2. It, it can be simplified anymore. If I write this as 1 plus 1, then the whole product goes down. But I have 3 times 658. So I can write 1976 as 3 plus 3 plus 3 till basically 658 times. And then at the end, I can add a 2. So this means that the product I'm going to get, B max, is going to be equal to 3 raised to 658 times 2. And this is our answer. Now, before, before I end the video, let's, let's look at some other examples. For example, let's look at 1,000. How are we going to write 1,000 in the same way? So we can write 1,000 as 3 times 333 plus 1. And in this case, we get 3 plus 3 plus 3, 333 times plus 1. However, we have a 1 here, and we can never use a 1. The reason for this is extremely simple. The 1 does not contribute anything to the product. It, it only contributes to the sum. So essentially, what you're doing by using a 1 is you're just, you're just wasting space. 1 is the least efficient number because it, it doesn't do anything to the product. So rather than using a 1 here, let's, let's add a 3 and a 1, and we'll get 3 plus 3 plus 3. So that's 332 times plus 4, right? Plus 4. So in this case, B max is going to be equal to 3 raised to 332 times 4. And thus, the video is complete. Thus, the solution is complete. Have a nice day.